Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to witness the union of this elf and this dwarf. Yep, this is William Dirk Johnson, and that's the topic for today. Hybrid species in your fantasy game. Half elves, half dwarves, half elf, half dwarf! Madness, is it? Or is it a normal thing? Are there half elf, half dwarves running around everywhere? In my campaign world, there are. Some time in the antediluvian past of the Britannia game, elves and dwarves got it on, had children. And those children had more children, possibly more elves and more dwarves. And thus, the race of what everyone calls low elves was born. They're half elves by all the game stats. They're hybrids. And they've earned the mixture of abilities between elf and dwarf. They are as tall as an elf. They are as broad as a dwarf. Oh, they're not as agile as an elf. They're not as smart as an elf. And they're definitely not as tough as, entirely tough as a dwarf. Or strong as a dwarf. But they've got a mixture of those things. Is that possible in your campaign world? Or are there other things? Half orcs. Uruk high. Uruk high were formed by Saruman's. Definitely got some magic on and merged the wild hill folk with the orcs to make us fighting Uruk high. A race of orcs that could fight in the light and the sun and be tough and mean. So, if you want that sort of thing, we do it. Put it in. What other hybrids are possible? Do trolls get it on? Well, that's a races. And, you know, it only takes one, one unfortunate circumstance for you know, to pop out some barrel, half troll, miskinet, mutant. And then, if it's able to spread its seed or breed again, then yes, there will be half trolls in your world. So consider how it can happen, is it? Is it the result of some one-off mythical pairing that was allowed by the gods? Because in the fantasy universe, you're not going to have to worry about genetics. You're going to have to worry about the patron deities of those species. They're going to let it happen. Things like um, the formation of half-elves in the Tolkien mythos that was... A result of a love so great that the gods made an exception. And thus you ended up with the line of half-elves. Who were generally pretty much elves. And that also then gave rise to the Numerians. So it might be that a hybrid requires divine sanction. And it's going to be such a cosmic exception that will happen this once. And thus your hybrid character, your hybrid PC or NPC, might be one of a kind. It might be unique. Or it might have happened at some time in the past. And that blessed union was allowed to be fertile and it's continued. And now there is an entire new race of these hybrid creatures. So that's, what, that's one way it can happen. Now, way to happen is that, well, they all basically are. All your species are basically intercompatible. And the race monitors and descriptors are just ter common terms. It might be that all your humanoid races, the evil monsters, goblin orc, ogre, gnoll, troll, giant, they're all one big happy interbreeding continuum. And usually, you know, they they breed and mate with others, most more like them, but there's nothing stopping orcs and goblins getting it on, or orcs and gnolls getting it on, orcs and bugbears, bugbears and trolls, dogs and cats living together, total anarchy, because that's the humanoid forces of chaos for you. And whatever pops out, well, there's generally a moniker for them. You know, a mix between ogre and orc. I think they have one of those in their books in already. But they might be gnolls. You know, bugbears. A bugbear might be a goblin. A 
hobgoblin and all. A stronger, nasty hybrid. Mm, could be that, you know, they're all just one big, one big species. And as they get older and bigger and all blessed by the, by the evil gods, they get bigger. And so they do all breed together because they are all the same species. And they're just intermediate forms. And of course, if they, some of them can breed with the goodly races, the humans, the dwarves. And they just get absorbed into the humanoid, into the great big, happy evil humanoid tribes who have lots of some dwarvish traits that they've knocked over a mountain of dwarves re recently, or at some point years, because they've done over some elves, or they've started getting shorter and smaller and weenier because, well, they've been breeding with halflings. But eventually they all grow up and can migrate towards giants and trolls. These are the big granddaddy, most successful, most long-lived, most victorious humanoids. So that's another thing. Another thing, humanoids could be... There is no half-humanoid race. They were just, you know, all orcs, our orcs, the orcs. They can, you can all use the same orc stat block. But some of them have flatter faces. Some of them have pig faces. Some of them have dog faces. Some of them are probably better represented by gnolls or by bugbears or by hobgoblins or whatever else there is in there because of bizarre, strange interbreedings they have had. So you can have all those half races. Now the other thing to worry about is how often, if it doesn't require divine sanction, if it doesn't require a miracle, what other barriers are there towards the various races getting together, meeting, and getting it on, having children. Why don't you see more half-dwarves, half-humans? Well, maybe it's because, well, humans and dwarves don't really interact all that much. You know, there's trade, war, but there's not much opportunity for actual successful breeding. Maybe it's a rare occurrence. Circumstances still have to be kind of right. So that's why you don't see many half elves, half dwarves. They are a rare thing. And the same with elves or hobbits or whatever other bizarre, weird species you have. Yes, they can all interbreed, but because they don't often interact, because there are big social taboos about it, some of the, some of the races might just murder any misogynic offspring. So these things are rare. They're not often seen. Last thing to consider is your angelic and demonic offspring. Now this has a lot of mythological weight to it. In the biblical book of Genesis there is mention of the Nephilim, those descendants of angels and women. Um, Greek mythology has all its demigods running around, well, mostly sired by Zeus, but <laughs> there are a few other gods who got into the mix as well. And, you know, these children the children of these matches can have offspring themselves. Uh, many of the Greek monsters are a result of that. The giants are the long descendants of the Nephilim. And so on. So you can have various offspring from there. And there is a long history of fantasy offspring with supernatural creatures. You have your Cambians. You have your Allodines. Offspring of a succubus and a human. Camion is um, the male result. Why there is a boy, one and a girl, one and a monster, one or two is beyond me, but there you are. And more recently, we've seen things like the Asimar, descendants of an the DDized version of descendants of actual angels. So they have things. There's also changelings. If an elf gets inserted into human culture by whatever means for whatever reason they can probably use the stats for a half elf they've been brought up with the traits of an elf and a human so that's another way you can have your halves they have grown up with they have grown up in a, in the other culture so they have some traits of that culture of that culture they have learned the adaptability of humans they have been brought up they have got got that ability to have that extra feat or that extra skill point and while they are technically truly an elf, because they were brought up by humans, 
you can call them a half elf. You know, they've had to max out that charisma for because they've had to get along. <laughs> they've had to learn how to get along. So that's another way you can have hybrids. They're not actually the result of breeding. They're a result of upbringing, nurture instead of nature. So that has been my thoughts on how you can have hybrids, half races. Thanks for listening. Like, share, subscribe, comment about it.